All right. We got what's called a helmet matchup going on in Ann Arbor. And I realize Oregon has a lot of different helmets, but Michigan only has the one. This is a, a game between two brands that we're super excited to see. I do not know that the actual circumstances of this game are as exciting as we thought they would be at the beginning of the season, but I am curious to watch Oregon as they go through the season because I feel like unlike some of the teams that started off hot, have hit a little rough patch, and have had to try to figure it out, Oregon started off with its rough, rough patch, and then I feel like they're in demolition mode right now, particularly because of Dylan Gabriel. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, if you go box score looking and you watch the, the scores and look at the stats, you look at the 38-9 win over Illinois and you're just like, okay, whatever, just a, a nice win. Like, Oregon could have scored 100 points in that game. And Illinois is a it's team a good that defense. Michigan. Like, they, I think they scored touchdowns on five of their first six possessions of the game and then just took their gas, their foot off the gas. Like yeah. they could have scored a hundred points if they really wanted to in this game, they are playing tremendously well. Um, and it is definitely going to be a bigger challenge defensively going against Michigan, I think, but I don't know if it's that drastic. Illinois got a pretty good defense. Illinois is a tough team. Yeah. They didn't just beat a team that's going to go one and 11 and no one like 38 to nine was a nice little gesture for them to, to take their foot off the gas. This team is humming right now. Yeah. And Gabriel especially. So let's let's look at Dylan Gabriel through the lens of our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks, best daily fantasy game in America. Play $5, get $50 instantly. Use the code STAPLES if you want to do that if you're a new user. And the way it works is you're picking squares. You'll have a player, there's a stat category attached to him. So for Dylan Gabriel, the the if you want to go passing yards, 275 and a half in this game against Michigan. Do you think he'll throw for less than that or more than that? And then if you click on that square, it'll tell you how many times in the past five games has he done that? Has he gone more than or less than 275 and a half? Well, he's gone more than that four of the past five games, Ari, although it is right on the line. If you look at that graph, right on the line, either way, that that's right about where he hits just about every game. Yeah. Um, I just don't know how you fade this guy right now, Andy. I just don't. And, and you look at Michigan. So Will Johnson, we don't know if he's going to play. He's the best cornerback in the country. He's been hurt. He's got a couple pick sixes this year. But uh, Jerome Moore got asked about him this week and, and said, no, he's not protecting his draft status. He hasn't shut it down. He They, they do expect him back. So I don't know if you're going to see him in this game. You will see some really good defensive linemen for Michigan. Uh, you'll see Kenneth Grant and Mason Graham, who are, are two of the best defensive tackles in the country. Josiah Stewart, one of the better edge rushers in the country. But like you said, if they can do this to Illinois and Dylan Gabriel can do this to Illinois, they can do something similar to Michigan. Uh, another I want to ask I you a question. I'm going to put you on the spot, Andy, before you go to the next okay. square. Yeah. I don't know if you looked this up. I looked this up before we did the video. Do you know where Michigan's passing defense ranks nationally this year? That's a great question. I do not. 85th. Yeah, Quinn Ewers did a number on him, too. Yeah, and so, Will Johnson, if he doesn't play. Yeah, it's a problem. You would, you would think that Michigan's defense would be much better than that in the air, is what I'm saying. The other the other square that I'm interested in is .5 rushing or receiving touchdowns for Dylan Gabriel, and it's a demon square. So if you use that, it, it's a higher potential payout. Dylan Gabriel scored a rushing touchdown in three of his last four games, and the thing you got to remember about the read option is it's really just how the defense plays you because you know, if the, if the defensive end plays it straight, Dylan Gabriel is going to hand it to Jordan James or hand it to Whittington. And, and that person's going in the end zone. But if the defensive end crashes or whoever the unblocked defender is crashes, Dylan Gabriel, who is an expert at this, he's one of the best in the country at, at making this decision. He's popping out and if they're inside the 10-yard line, he's walking into the end zone. So that that's the one that I think is interesting because it really will depend on how Michigan decides to play it, how scared are they of Dylan Gabriel, how scared are they of, of Jordan James, depending on the situation. But I think that's a very intriguing square in this game too. Yeah, yeah, and also kind of random, though you do see that Dylan Gabriel has done it quite a bit, and uh, especially in the close game against Ohio State, his, his touchdown run, 
was a pretty big difference maker in a one point victory. So yeah, I think that it's telling that it's a demon square because you know you are kind of leaving it up to chance, but he does run enough and they do call plays where the potential outcome is him running it to make that uh, a pretty interesting thought. Yeah. And and if you think about it this way, so if you want to go, you know, if you want to think about it this way, Kenneth Grant, Mason Graham, you feel pretty comfortable about them being able to stop the back. So you tell the end to go get the quarterback. Just, yeah. So that, that's something to think. But the other thing you got to think about and worry about with Dylan Gabriel, if you're the opposing defense, is if you play man and you get in the into the backfield and your DB's backs are turned, Dylan Gabriel may just take off and run on you. So yep. it's, it's a little bit tricky. That's why we're talking about him as a potential Heisman finalist. That's why we're talking about him you know, potentially leading Oregon to a national title. They look... They're not a lot of good answers against against this team or against this quarterback. So we'll see what Michigan can do. But I I, I think Dylan Gabriel keeps on humming in this game. Yeah, I'm with you. I think he does too. Um, and just the entire offense in general is feeling itself. I mean, I, I'm looking back at some of the touchdown drive times of the Illinois game, and they had a nine-play drive that took four minutes. They had a seven-play drive. Uh, these are all touchdown drives. It took two minutes and 41 seconds. Eight-play, 65-yard drive, 414. Six plays, 54 yards, 313. Eight plays, 89 yards, 203. They're like rolling over people. Like they yes. are like, they're not just going down the field. They're doing it quickly, efficiently, <laughs> and, and methodically. And we didn't even talk about what Michigan's offense might mean in terms of short fields for and Oregon's possessions at the very least. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, yeah. We, we were thinking Dylan Gabriel was going to have a big, big game at the big house. 